Number one, give yourself permission to heal. Excellent. Give yourself permission to heal. It is your divine right. It is your destiny. Give yourself permission to heal. Your doctor might not give it to you. Your acupuncturist might not. Your wife, your husband, da, 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 da. Give yourself permission to heal. It is within you. Everything is within you. So here we are with RJ Spina. And I got to tell you, I'm just, just meeting this guy, but you are going to love him. Spiritual healer, teacher, healer, author of Supercharged Self-Healing Book, um, created the healing program called the Ascend the Frequencies Technique. And I've got to tell you, everything involves frequencies, everything. And teaches seven steps healing system used to overcome his chest down paralysis. I, I, I mean... This is phenomenal. RJ, welcome. Oh, thank but, you so much for having me. My pleasure. Buddy, okay, and can can you share? Because I mean, I'm just starting off meeting you, but we are we are in such the same page because this is the future of medicine. And every healer that I've known that that has experienced incredible challenges and they, they came out, that challenge was a gift. Can you describe your story? Like, like how did you get involved in this? Sure. Yeah. The, the quickest context I'd like to give is that um, even as a little kid, uh, I used to just leave my body or what we call astral projection. So for me, from, from jump, uh, I always knew tangibly that I was spirit. So I never had to wrestle with uh, the association with physicality of just being this body-mind complex. So I had, a, I had a good head start. And on top of that, uh, as odd as that is, it's also maybe even more odd is that I used to say that if I ever get sick, I'll just heal myself, which, which is, a, <laughs> you know, imagine a kid actually saying these things and then talking about all these different experiences about literally being in different frequencies and dimensions. So we could say that I, I came into this world uh, like that, whatever the like that is. Uh, but then what we can do is, Dr. B, we'll fast forward all the way to uh, April 23rd, 2016. I had been sick, feeling terrible, spent two weeks in the hospital, a little, um, only like about a month and a half earlier. I had been diagnosed with sepsis. Uh, I was told I would only live another 48 hours. I was also diagnosed with type one diabetes, which was news to me, uh, hypothyroidism, uh, Hashimoto autoimmune disease, pancreatitis, and thyroiditis. So what they did was, it was clearly a life and death situation. So they started giving me a crazy amount of antibiotics. In fact, I had a stent put into my arm because the antibiotics were so strong and I had a, a, well, they would administer it to me for the two weeks I was there. Then I got discharged and I had to continue that. Well, that antibiotic didn't work because lo and behold, uh, I literally became permanently paralyzed from, from the chest down. I was rushed to uh, emergency life-saving surgery where they performed, uh, and I'm sure you're familiar with this, Dr. B, they performed a laminectomy and they scraped it. The neurosurgeon was fantastic. He scraped off the, the infection uh, that, was, that was on my spine, predominantly T7 and T8, but from T5 wow. up. But T7 and T8 had, it, had a rough go of it. And there's a video of an MRI on my website. You can see my spine. You can see the surgeon's notes complete paraplegia before, complete paraplegia after. So the, the life-saving surgery worked. Here I, here I am. <laughs> but uh, yeah, sure. what it really did was it gave me an opportunity to work on my own self-healing. And the other thing I just want to add to that, and then we can, we can get into whatever you like, Dr. B, is that upon awakening from life-saving surgery, uh, I had awakened into authentic, what we can call cosmic consciousness. The mantra that I used to say as a kid that if I ever get sick, I'll just heal myself. The know-how, the fundamentals, the steps, 
the protocols, it's literally like someone just pulled back a curtain. And the moment that I woke up, the remembering immediately came back to me. And I literally started explaining to the ICU nurse these higher consciousness metaphysics about how I was going to put my body back together in terms of accessing higher frequency energy and being able to channel it into my body. I was going to work with myself at the blueprint level of where form and function is actually put together. And I literally started explaining all these things to her. And I told her in a hundred days that I would walk unassisted. I, it's, it's, it's done. I don't even have to think about it. I know exactly what to do. And in exactly a hundred days I walked. What, what kind of work were you doing at the time? Uh, I had stopped working for a little while. I used to teach uh, my last job, or, <laughs> corporate job, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. uh, my title was sales guru, which I think is kind of funny. Uh, so I used to just teach sales uh, to organizations and to companies. And towards the end of my career, the last two years um, working in corporate America, uh, everyone would actually address me as crazy as it sounds. They would address me as sensei or master. And, and I, and I, I, you know, I was just teaching sales. So, but I think what was happening is that the true nature of my beingness, being, being a real teacher, uh, was, was coming through and it was done out of affection. But I knew, I knew at that time that I have to quote unquote, stop pretending to just be to just do normal things or teach normal things. I really need to be what I am. And of course, the universe forced my hand because shortly thereafter, uh, my body became permanently paralyzed. It didn't work. I couldn't feel it. It was totally destroyed. So I gave myself this great challenge. My last name is Spina, which means spine. <laughs> yeah. So it was all, it was all lined up and, it, and it, was, it was time to get going. <laughs> it's neat because, I mean, we're all on pathways. Okay, and we all have talents, and your talents weren't being used to what you were before, and you were born for this. Okay, absolutely. I, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we got to get together. Yeah. Okay, because um, I was uh, I was a contractor. Okay, I was run over by a car when I was thirty. Had my legs broken, sternum fractured, it, organs bruised, and stuff. And you know, it it just when I was, I could, I couldn't really work. So I went back to school and I was working with a chiropractor and I found out that, that it was really, really hard to understand anatomy and to remember everything until I got to human dissection. Mm. When I touched the body, it was like, like a light going off. It's like, my God, I know this. And I mean, knew it like I knew my name. So just the way you're describing, it's like, Oh my gosh, this is, a, this is the pathway. Yeah, okay, it's a, we could even say, Dr. B, I like to describe it as a muscle memory. Like it literally, yeah. it just came flooding back and it's like, I just knew. Yeah, yeah, that, and, and, you know, ascended masters, you, to know this, to have that spark inside of you as a kid is um, a burden and a gift. Mm. Uh, now, um, what did you end up discovering about the healing? I, I, that it actually works because a lot of people, uh, you didn't have an anatomy background. And, and normally when people are going to heal themselves, they visualize it. They have some people working with them. So what were you doing during your healing? Like, what were you, were you, of course, breathing had to be involved. What, what kind of techniques were you visualizing it? Yeah. All, all of the above and then some. So what, what I was doing, Dr. B, is outlined in the book as those seven, I found myself doing these seven things over and over and over again, to the point where literally I never stopped. It was a perpetual act of creation until all of a sudden I, I saw myself being able to walk. So I never took myself out of it. And so that is something, I, won't, I don't wanna jump ahead, so to speak, Dr. B, but that's something that I really want humanity to understand is that looking for results stops the process of healing. Now I know that sounds odd, but let me, I'll give an analogy. Uh, if we're driving to the store, we got our GPS uh, you know, on our car, our truck, whatever, we're driving to the store. We don't stop halfway there, get out of the car, pull over and look around and say, are we actually getting any closer to the store? Is this actually working? Are we, are we ever gonna really get there? 
So a ridiculous analogy. But the point is that when you stop the process, you don't get any closer. You're stopping it by pulling over and looking for results. So what I found is that the key was to unify the intention and desire for healing with the self. So there was no separation. So there was no stopping. So it was just this perpetual act of doing this or doing that. And even when there would be cessation of doing one of the exercises or protocols, the unification of my consciousness and my body along with what I was doing just continued. And I could feel the healing and the repair happening even when I was quote unquote doing nothing. I never actually looked to find out where I'm at, where, what's the progress? Did we get to the store yet? I would use my tangible experience about how I'm feeling. And it wasn't just permanent, I'm doing air quotes, wasn't just permanent chest down paralysis, Dr. B. It was type one diabetes. It was uh, Hashimoto's autoimmune disease. It was uh, hypothyroidism. It was also something called autonomic dysreflexia, which I don't recommend, is when there's an injury in your spine, I believe above T6, and mine really got hammered on T7 and T8. Your autonomic system just, just stops functioning properly. You stop breathing, your pulse drops, your body temperature skyrock skyrockets or just com completely plummets. So the automatic systems stop functioning. So I actually had to remember, and it, what it felt like was a very ancient yogic practice to regain control of my heart rate, my pulse, my breathing, my body temperature. And so this was also something that was on the table in terms of healing. But the most important thing to understand is that we can all do this because the mechanics, the blueprints are the same for everybody. They're the same for everybody. And all we have to do is apply ourselves properly with the right dedication and the sky's the limit for everyone. Brilliant. Buddy, this is the future. We, we talk about physical, chemical, emotional, and, you know, guys typically aren't going to pay attention to emotions. But when we talk about that, you are in control of your emotions and emotions are chemicals secreted by how the brain perceives the environment. I, what I tell my patients is, those, those masters that can, that can raise or lower their blood pressure, they can hold their breath for interminable amounts of times. Those masters, what I tell my patients, I'm gonna turn you into one of those masters who mastered the chemicals that your brain secretes to change your physiology. I, it, nobody, it, but that, that is so essential to healing. Oh, it, it, it cannot happen without it. So it can't happen without it. another way that we could say that, Dr. B, and it's 100% on the money, which you just said, is that we need to put ourselves in a perpetual uh, parasympathetic state where the body is perpetually healing itself. Now, from what I've observed through my own awakening and work that I've done with people is that the only time the body goes into this self-healing and self-repair mode is when we're unconscious, when we're asleep. And that has to do with the egoic mind. And so in the book, I spend, I think it's, and it's kind of funny, I can't really remember. I'm in my second book. The, the first book, I talk a lot about what I call the ego mind identity. Okay, and that's the human character that gets created through incarnation. Now, essentially, that's what keeps us out of whack and out of balance. And the only time we start to go back into balance and alignment is when the egoic mind is turned off, which is when we're asleep. So what I want people to do is start to realize that not only can we put ourselves back into this parasympathetic state, we can increase it by an order of magnitude when we do it properly. Now, it, you teach these techniques when you talk about meditation and the effects on the body. I mean, that's, that's it, what, what a lot of our audience is gonna understand is that the automatic nervous system, sympathetic keeps you alive under stress and parasympathetic is the rest, digest, and repair. Sympathetic is located in the thoracic area. Parasympathetic is located in the neck of the pelvis. And, and we need that balance. Now, um, it, you, but you have to address this stuff. Now, the importance of meditation, what do you do with meditation? Because we teach a couple of different methods. What, what, where it's, what's your pathway? Yeah, okay. Yeah, great question. Okay, one of the things that I have discovered uh, in this life is that many, many people come to me and they say, RJ, I just can't meditate. I just try and try and try and I just can't do it. Well, I like to say that the self, 
or what we really are is meditation because what we are comes before thought, before emotion, before the body, and therefore before any bodily experiences. So really all we need to do as the starting point, Dr. B, is to return to what, to what we are and because the self is meditation. So one way to do it effortlessly, and the book is filled with what I call magic tricks, CK magic, not C with like three card Monty. These are real magic tricks that move energy. So the book is filled with them and they're instantaneous. So we can, we can do one right now in terms of instantaneous meditation. All you have to do is pretend that your physical eyes are just floating in space with no brain attached. You can't think. You actually can't think. So we go from, I can't meditate no matter what I do. We completely invert that because now we're working with the truth. Just pretend your two eyes are floating right in space with no brain attached. You cannot think, you cannot think. So we have solved the uh, ageless problem of I can't meditate. The book has many of these real magic tricks. They're instantaneous. Now that puts us from my perspective, that puts us at the starting line of the journey of, of uh, self-healing and self-repair. We must first learn to be fully present, which is actually stopping the egoic mind from running, running, running. Now, once, once we're fully present, Dr. B, what happens metaphysically, I know our eyes don't see this, but the, the, uh, this eye can see it. So what starts to happen is that the energy that we have swirling around our mental body and around our emotional body, which is just using up our life force, by the way, when we are simply present, two eyes floating in space, no brain attached, all that swirling energy drops down like water draining from a bathtub. And it literally drops out of your mental body and keeps going. It drops down out of your emotional body. And now it returns to what I like to call the gas tank. And the gas tank sits just beneath the belly button above the groin. And when we're fully present, the energy actually sits right there. And when you become very detached, you can actually feel your energy and you can actually move it, your chi, your life force. You can start to command it as, as needed. But the key to start is to be fully present, accept yourself completely, warts and all, accept yourself. That will allow you to be present, two eyes floating, no brain attached. Now you're meditating without effort because the self is meditation. And then from there, we address the Ascend of Frequencies uh, healing technique, the different steps and protocols that is completely and utterly revolutionary that will change the paradigm of self-healing forever. Oh my gosh. Have you ever seen a dark field microscopy live blood cell analysis? Yes. Okay, the symbiotes activity in the back. Okay, that it, to explain it to patients, it's, we're still not sure of what it is, but it is a life force entity. And one of the reasons it's illegal to use it on the other side of the border in America for diagnostic is because it is the life force. It's the spiritual, it's a measurable aspect. And we see it look like snow in people who have MS and Parkinson's diagnosis because those don't exist, but the, the adaptation does. And we see it like almost non-existent in fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, things like that. I, it, it, you, body, mind, and spirit, you got to have all three working together and all three are involved in the trauma. One of the things, the challenges I got with, with patients is they're locked in, in this cycle, almost, almost like a rat on a wheel where, where I, you know, I hurt all the time. I've been hurting for years and, and I'm, you know, I do all this and it was pain, pain, pain. It's, it's like, if I pick up a, a water bottle and my shoulder twinches, it's no big deal. Um, you know, because it just got through adjusting 30 people. And if somebody else does that, the, these thoughts fall like dominoes. Oh my God, my shoulder's breaking down. My body's breaking down. And soon, you know, it, it, I won't be able to pick up my kids and they suck you into the pit of hell. What, what kind of techniques do you tell people that are locked in that? I mean, the, the, to separate your eyes, your vision, your sensory input from your thoughts, that's brilliant, man. I never heard that. 
Yeah, so the, the, the key, Dr. B, is what I call non-attachment, or we could say detachment, although detachment has some sort of negative connotation, unfortunately. But uh, when it's explained properly, it no longer has a negative connotation. So it is non-identification or non-attachment. So an easy way to explain this is that whatever we are the awareness of is proof that we're not that because we're the awareness, not what we are aware of. We are this pristine, untouched, unsullied perception or awareness. And so whatever we become aware of, that's actually the proof that we're not that. It's the actual proof. You can't be the thing and be aware of it at the same time, right? That's literally impossible. So we are this energy being, if you will, without me going down the rabbit hole about that. We are the awareness of thoughts. We're the awareness of emotions. We're the awareness of our body. And we're obviously the awareness of the sensations within the body, we call them pain and pleasure, if you like. So none of those things are actually us. And it's proof that if you're the awareness of it, you know you can't be that because you're, you're what's aware of it. Once we start to let that land, literally let that land and don't fight, we start to get some space between what we are and what's going on with the body-mind complex, okay? The body-mind complex, whatever is going on with it, doesn't touch what you really are. When we see the clouds, rarely in San Diego, but when we see the clouds and it obfuscates the sun, right? We can't see the sun, it's just cloudy. And what do clouds produce? Rain, sleet, snow, tornado, hurricane, bad weather, right? Bad weather. None of that touches the sun. It never touches the sun. And you and everyone else is the sun. And no matter what goes on with the body-mind complex, it never actually touches you, what you really are. This is one of the most important understandings to start off with, because now what we have is a, what I would, from my perspective, we would say a healthy level of non-attachment or detachment from body-mind complex. It doesn't mean you nullify it or negate it. You know, it's a nice suit to use for physical reality, but it's not what you are. You command it. You're inside it temporarily, temporarily merged with it. So just like when you get in your car, you know you're not your car, hopefully. You get in your car, you know you're not your car. And if something is wrong with your car, starter, oil change, whatever, you're just like, yeah, I'll just fix it. I'll, I'll just address what needs to be done and I'll fix it. Or I'll take it to a mechanic, someone who knows what they're doing, and I'll just have them fix it very dispassionately. Right. We don't do that swirl like you were just talking about, Dr. B, like, oh, right. We don't do that. OK, I want humanity to stop doing that when there's issues with the body mind complex. Realize that you're the sun, that you're untouched. And whatever's going on with the body mind complex, we can simply address just like you would fix your car. And to be this detached is really the key, because that detachment, Dr. B, gives us some space between what we are and body mind complex. Now we got room to work. And if we got room to work, now that we have the proper teachings and protocols, all bets are off. We could do whatever it is that we need to do. There's no limit to imagination, absolutely none. And when we access higher states of consciousness through imagination, we can literally put our body back together at the core. RJ, that's brilliant. I, I, the analogy of the sun and the clouds, I've never heard that. And, and it really is breaking these people out of their cycles because they own the disease. You know, it runs in my family. It's so there's the victim mentality. I can't do anything about it. I've seen every expert. Okay. And, and I've tried every medication. I no, the body responds intelligently based on the stimulus and you have the power to change that. And so, I mean, I've seen every disease possible reversed. Um, the seven techniques that you're talking about or the seven steps, uh, can you, can you expand on them a little bit or? Yeah, of okay. course. Of course. Okay. Let me do, uh, let's talk about one right now. We can talk about another one too. So, uh, the first thing that the book starts off with is addressing the ego mind identity and Dr. B there's, there's no healing without the truth. Okay. 
So we have to realize that we're not this human character that we create. We're not the body. We're not the thoughts, the emotions, or the bodily experiences. That's number one. That's that whole separation and detachment. So we got to get to we got to get to home plate before we can hit a home run. Okay. So home plate is this this new level of awareness, and the book outlines it's very simple to understand. Even though it's a higher consciousness understanding, very plain words, it's impossible to miss it. Okay. One of the things I like remembered or discovered or, or was given to me, which is probably all the same thing. Uh, as a human being, we have four ways of, uh, of expressing ourselves: mentally, emotionally, verbally, and physically. Now, by the way, in higher, in higher planes of existence, there's more, but while we're here, we have four ways. Okay. So very simply, it came to me or dawned upon me or, or someone whispered it in my ear. It's like, combine all four of those elements of expression into one thing and unify yourself with it. That's how you're now operating in the most powerful way that you possibly can. You're incorporating all forms of expression that we have at our disposal. So what the hell does all that mean? Okay, so what that, what that means is that if we take a mental visualization Okay, and I'll, and I'll just relay what I did with myself. And the, the book talks about what other people did for themselves. So you can see just what, exactly what people did. But what I did is that when I was in the hospital for a while, and by the way, my room was right by the window of the sidewalk, so I would watch every day all the nurses and doctors walk in. There was nothing I wanted more than to just be able to walk on the sidewalk holding my Starbucks and just chit-chatting away. So it was always right in front of me. The goal was always right there. Okay, so what I did was I would sit there and I would imagine, mentally imagine an image that I had of myself that was symbolic or representative of when I was in peak health. So for me, I, I, would, I would remember snorkeling and things like that where I was very active. I used to run, lift weights and all this kind of stuff. So I had this image of myself snorkeling and just swimming, right? So I saw myself in this peak physical condition. So that's one, that's mental. So now I'm using the, the ability to express myself mentally by giving myself an image of myself that represents health, vitality, and vigor. That's number one. Number two, emotionally, to be able to express ourselves emotionally. So what I would do is I would add to that image, I would remember what it feels like tangibly to be that healthy and to perform that exercise. I would remember because it's a muscle memory, it's within me. I would tangibly make the muscles, the cells, the proteins, the neurons, remember what that felt like. So that's number two. I had the image and now I was tangibly remembering what it felt like then I would incorporate verbalization because we said there's four ways. Verbalization was number three. So we can think of the verbalization. Lots of people do mantras and affirmations. And the reason why they do it is because it works, right? So you can see yourself doing a mantra or an affirmation. What I would do is a command because from my perspective, commands are the most powerful. So I would give myself a command as I have the visualization I would be making all my muscles and neurons and cells remember what that feels like because it is a muscle memory. And then I would give myself a command, something along the lines of, I bring the life force energy back through my spine and into my legs now. And your command must be in the present tense. Just something to remember. The command must be in the present tense. If you talk about a future, then it never happens because tomorrow never gets here. Okay, and then the last thing I would do is I would use some kind of physical gesture, which was difficult for me because I was paralyzed from the chest down. But it's just to incorporate this last aspect of expression. So I would just do something with my hands. I would do this. I would almost wave them like that, like I'm doing magic because by the way, that's what I'm teaching right now. As I would do something with my hands like this. So I had mentalization, I had verbalization, I had the emotionalization of remembering what it felt like. And then I gave myself physicalization by moving my hands. And I would incorporate those things. It was total unification, Dr. B. There wasn't me doing something. It was pure flow state. It was one thing. Me and the goal became one. 
by using all four forms of the, of the ways that we can possibly express ourselves. That's how we are the most powerful, is when we combine all four into one thing. And by the way, that is how you do real magic. And there's more information about that, but that is how you do it. So I would do that over and over again. And then the physical motion, because clearly my, I was paralyzed, right? So I would have one of the physical therapists or the nurses, you know, lift my legs, move my legs. And I'd be doing the other three steps. I'd be commanding, I'd be imagining myself, and I'd be feeling it again, and I'd be moving my legs. This is so powerful. It transcends because we never, why I don't know, we never put these four things together. We do one at a time, or oh, now I'm going to visualize, or now I'm going to give myself an affirmation, or now put them together. And then no separation between you and what you're doing. It is tangible, the power that you feel when you do this. And when you're working at this level, you can do anything. This, this is honest to God true. Uh, uh, there's an old saying, people are confused. They think that eyes see, ears hear, and stomachs digest. Dead people have those and they don't work. So it's a life force entity and you've, you've got it. And it's in your power to control and direct that force. And that's, that's one of the reasons what we do is so different. Oh, oh, this is, this is phenomenal. And this, this has to get out there. This is, and I just want to add one thing, uh, Dr. B, is that um, there's been countless, countless, countless studies that show meditation actually changes your DNA. It repairs cells. It, it literally, we've seen scans of, you know, monks' brains. They literally look different than the ordinary person because of the med meditation is proven to create or engender health. Now, it only stands to reason that more powerful states of meditation only greatly increase the efficacy of self-healing by an order of magnitude. Now, this is what I have discovered. And the book is literally, you could say, all these different ways to bring yourself into this incredibly deep state of meditation that puts self-healing and self-repair it's not even linear anymore, Dr. B. It becomes quantum. I was doing, just as an example, there'd be like a Tuesday and I'd be in the, the, in the rehab, they'd wheel me into the rehab of, uh, center of at the gym part and they'd be trying to move my legs around doing this and that. And in the beginning, I could just start to move my legs. And, but after about three or four weeks, things were really starting to happen. And what I wouldn't be able to do on Tuesday at all Wednesday, I was doing it flawlessly. It's like impossible. There's like no way. I showed no indications on Tuesday that I'd be able to do that. And Wednesday, I was doing it like, it like that ability never left me. This is what happens when we start to work with our higher mind and our entire body of energy. And it's harnessed properly. I know I keep saying this. There's no such thing as impossible. Now, when I say it, I mean it. It's not a, it's not a saying. It's not a slogan. Okay, me putting myself back together is your permission slip to do the impossible for yourself. <laughs> it's, it's only impossible because that's their perception. Yeah, yeah, body, bodies heal. And I've, I've seen it every, every circumstance, impossible circumstances in their world. I, I tell people we're on a three-legged stool, physical, chemical, and emotional stress. Mm -hmm. You have to address all three or healing is not going to occur. And emotional uh, your ability to control that is equally as important as the chemical stressors you're under and the physical stressors that, my God, RJ, that you're, th this is phenomenal. More people got to know about you. Okay. And now um, where can people find you? Cause you, you keep mentioning the, the book. What's the name of the book? The name of the book is supercharged self-healing. And then the subtitle is quite long. <laughs> the subtitle is, a revolutionary guide to access higher frequency states of consciousness meditation that rejuvenate and repair. So long subtitle, but it's supercharged self healing. Uh, the book is you know available everywhere: Amazon, Kindle, uh, paperback, audiobook. I think it's even now available on CD, which is fantastic. So uh, you could get that book anywhere. My website is ascend the frequencies. 
ascendthefrequencies.com, ascendthefrequencies.com. Uh, you can even book um, a one-on-one -on -one private session with me. I think I do. Unfortunately, I do think it's a few months, um, booked a few months out, so to speak. But we can work one-on-one. -on -one. I do that with a lot of people. I've also created um, some online courses and a mobile app. So some of these teachings are actually, you can actually get right on your phone. You can get it right through the website and you can download it onto your phone. So now, instead of having our phone to endlessly distract ourselves and bring us further and further out of balance and harmony, you can now use your phone to put yourself back together and actually tangibly start to become self-aware and self-realized through the exercises and, and the protocols. So everything is there. My team is, we're constantly creating new courses. I'm gonna have a new course that comes out, not this Saturday, but next Saturday in terms of how to master your mental health, which is that's the real pandemic. If you ask me, the anxiety and depression that is going on with humanity must stop. And these very simple exercises and protocols will stop it in its tracks immediately. So you can say goodbye to anxiety and depression. You just haven't been taught properly how to overcome it. So those days are over. And in terms of putting your body back together, whether there's an emotional, mental, or physical imbalance, and they're all related, now you can simply use these steps, these healing techniques within the book and within the, the mobile app to put yourself back together. But last thing I want to say, which I'm, I'm repeating myself, we must start with being present. That is the starting line. We cannot heal ourselves if all we're doing is thinking and emoting and wigging out about whatever. That is a perpetual state of disharmony. Let me put it this way. Whatever conceptualized reality that you create for yourself, your body then has the tangible experience of that. That is the mind-body connection in one sentence. Now, most of us realize that when we're wigging out, stressed out, we make ourselves sick. Most of us have now come to the, thank goodness, most of us have come to this realization. Dr. B, the opposite is also true. When we create an expanded state of consciousness, the body must have that tangible experience as well. It works both ways. And so now we're going to discover what really is an expanded state of consciousness. How do we really do this? And how do we do that and direct it towards self-healing and self-repair? That's what I'm here to teach. Oh my God. RJ, the time has never been more important than, than, than right now because people are feeling so unempowered. And they're, they're developing a victim status. I mean, suicides, drinking, drugs, everything is through the roof. That we're all the same energy. You can tap into that. And, and I um, was listening to this one farmer. I'm doing a gray water system at this, this ranch. And he says, look, the tomatoes don't know if there's a plate going on. The trees don't know. The cow still gives milk. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. So you can find that harmony inside of you and to change the world. We got to change ourselves. I, honest to God, it, it, incredible. Um, now you've got, I think there's a hundred dollar off limited show special. Can, can you describe that? Because please, it, it, if you, you have any, if you want to get optimal health, you can't get it unless you're doing this type of work. And yeah. RJ, you, you told me just stuff now and I've, I've, been in a meditation since I was a little kid. I was reading Telop saying Rampa when I was 12. Okay. So, so, you know, you, you need this type and, and you give me analogies that I've never heard in my life. I love the freaking sun and clouds. That's, that's, I'm going to be using that in a talk. <laughs> please, please do. Yes. And, and brother, I'm going to give you credit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank so you. What, what's special? What's, what's special? What code? Yeah. So the, the, the supercharged app, Okay, is really uh, it's extraordinary. There was five months. Forget about how long it took to uh, took to write the book. What's in this course is is uh, it, it is revolutionary. Not just the teachings. There's 3D modeling that captures some of the things that that uh, that I perceive from a, a higher state of consciousness. So you actually get to see what is really going on energetically when you do these exercises. It is literally. A, a peek into the world of wisdom that the five senses will never give you uh, access to. So it's loaded with 3D modeling. It's loaded with whiteboard animation, which I, I just, I'm just a big fan of, you know, when the hand draws real fast. And mm -hmm. So 
I had the entire healing technique done through whiteboard animation as well. So not only is it uh, incredibly educated, it's, it's just fun. It's a fun way to learn because it captures it through whiteboard animation. There's state-of-the-art computer graphics. I had this incredible guy in Australia put together some of these computer graphics that are representative of all the things that are happening when you do the, the technique. There's 25 hours of video, which some of it I apologize for because you're going to have to look at this mug for about 25 hours. But I explain everything and I do it with you. I'm doing it with you. So all you have to do is actually watch and I'm literally going to guide you through it as I do it with you. So it's, it's completely comprehensive and absolutely revolutionary. So uh, if, if people have the wherewithal financially to do it, it's the only self-healing course you'll ever need your entire life ever because it covers everything. It doesn't matter what's wrong in terms of what the disharmony is. High frequency energy harmonizes low frequency, uh, low frequency disharmony. It's like if you put on the hot tub and you put something in the hot tub, it's going to get hot. When you raise your frequency, and you raise your frequency through the steps, low frequency disharmony cannot exist in a high frequency environment. It just cannot. What starts to happen automatically is self-repair and self-healing. It just starts to happen. And this is at the, the forefront of this. So the, the, the mobile app, and if you don't wanna do it on your phone, you can do it on your, on your computer. And if you go to the website, I do a two hour, if you don't want to watch it, that's okay. But I do a two hour webinar with all this free teachings. And then the next hour I show you a sneak peek of what's in the course. And then at the very end, there's a discount code to take a hundred dollars off the online course and the mobile app. If, if what I'm talking about resonates with you, then this is what you have been waiting for. I promise you, this is how healing actually works. The future of healing is high frequency energy. That's how it works. When you start to access this within yourself, you can do anything. Unparalyzing yourself and curing yourself of incurable diseases is not going to be just this, what this one weirdo can do. It's going to become commonplace, commonplace. And anyone who's availing themselves of this information, these techniques now, is way, way, way ahead of the curve. Now is the time. No one is going to do this for you. No one is going to do this for you. You have now been handed the keys to the car. Do it. Drive. Don't stop. It's yours. It's now yours. Please avail yourself. Use my teachings to free yourself and use my incarnation to heal yourself now and forever. RJ, you are so right on, man. A hundred percent, because you have to. We are more energy than matter. That's a fact. Okay, I mean that's that's physics. This is this is that that godlike energy inside of everyone, and energy can't be created or destroyed. We're all we're all those eternal beings, and you're talking to tap into it. No more victim mentality. And and I'm telling you right now, with the thousands and thousands and thousands of people I've seen, healing does not occur unless to involve the emotional and mental and physical and spiritual aspect. You, it cannot occur. And RJ, your stuff is rocking. Buddy, did, thank you. Now, now, do you have any final words? To, to, because one of the challenges I got is people have this victim mindset mentality that, that oh my God, the world is going to hell in a handbasket and, and, and this runs in my family. Of course, it doesn't because you could name four relatives that don't have that. What what could you tell someone to to just no? You don't have that fibromyalgia. You don't have that inflammatory bowel disease. Your body is responding correctly. Take the step. How do you break them out of that old mindset? Uh, we number one, give yourself permission to heal. Excellent. Give yourself permission to heal. It is your divine right. It is your destiny. Give yourself permission to heal. Your doctor might not give it to you. Your acupuncturist might not. Your wife, your husband, da, 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 da. Give yourself permission to heal. It is within you. Everything is within you. There isn't even anything outside of yourself. That's a whole nother conversation. But everything is within you. Everything that you need, it's you. These steps and these understandings, it's what alchemy really is. It's transmutation. 
We are taking the perfection that's already within there and we're simply bringing it out. It's simple. It's metaphysics. And magic is metaphysics. So we're just bringing back the truth. That's all it is. But it starts with that one thing, Dr. B. Give yourself permission to heal. That's RJ, it. I, I hope, brother, this is part one. <laughs> I would love to hook up with you again. This is amazing. So please get look at his stuff. Look at the ascendthefrequencies.com. I'm on that site like right now. And it's um, brilliant. Man, look up his stuff because it is. You are more energy than matter. And, and remember a couple of those old books. Um, what does it take to open a door? You got to knock. What does it take to get stuff? You got to ask. And, and you are, you're more energy than matter. You're made in the image likeness of God. Um, you are designed to be healthy. You're designed to have maximum and to change the world and to change yourself. Mm -hmm. RJ, God bless you, man. You are amazing. And I'm so glad that, that you found this pathway because you're one of the masters to get us out of this crap that we're in now. Oh, well, thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure. It's my honor. It's my joy. It's also in some aspects my responsibility, which I accept gladly. Thank you very much for having me on, Dr. B. And I would absolutely love to be on again. There is much you and I can talk about for sure. Oh, God, yes. Yeah, and you're <laughs> only right across the border. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, brother, God bless you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're making a difference in the world. Thank you. If you can hear my voice, you are part of the resistance.